And so maybe that's one reason that I didn't win, but I told people I'd much rather lose as the person that I am than win as the person that I'm not. That's the problem with our political system now. Too many fakes, too many liars, too many crooks. And while people are suffering, while unemployment is still at 21, 22 percent in eastern North Carolina, we see millions, in some cases billions of dollars being wasted, and there's no accountable leadership. And instead we see people trying to score political points through name calling, through badgering. Um, that's not what people need. People are interested in what puts food on the table. People are interested in what will help them take care of their children. Children are interested in what will help them go to college. That's the type of leadership we need. And I believe that that's the type of leadership that God still wants for God's people to have. And um, I'm happy to help anyone who I feel in my heart offers that. But as it stands right now, even I'm going to have to reevaluate some people um, in terms of some people that I thought meant well, and they may not mean well. So I'm going to have to readjust some things with some people and be very brief with some people on some issues. Where in discussing all these things that you have accomplished, the obvious question becomes, are you married or in a relationship? Unmarried and single. Um, as I said um, earlier regarding the primary, that sort of brought about the demise of my last relationship. And I now have a, a different perspective on the importance of a relationship and marriage and also the issue of protection. I believe there's a certain need, and I know I sound really old-fashioned in saying this, but I would say for someone like me who's involved in a professional or um, even ministerial position, I think it's very important to protect one's loved ones, especially a spouse and children. And to that extent, I think it's also a calling. I think two people have to be called to be together. And I think, unfortunately, we live in a time in which there's anything but people being called to be together. And I think it also takes patience um, and just one preparing oneself to, to be a friend. I think friendship is a talent. I think both friendship and love are talents. And I, I think that if we start to view both loving a person and being a friend to a person as an art form, I think we would start to see healthier relationships. I think. Um, listening, being a good listener is a talent. So I certainly want to work on those talents myself um, and then just prepare myself for the possibility of being called to share my life with someone. But I certainly want to be a lot more protective of anyone that I should find myself in a relationship with. Okay, so you say you're single. What is your ideal woman? Ideal. Um, I think any woman who could tolerate me with all of my issues is ideal. Uh, so I think that's the main thing. I think patience um, and understanding. And uh, I think a woman who is patient and understanding, I couldn't ask for more than that. So what advice would you give other aspiring entrepreneurs, teachers, artists, politicians, etc.? I would certainly tell them two things. Um, the first would be to give their all in everything that they do. There are 24 hours in a day. I would tell them to work at least 16 to 20 hours a day, especially in the beginning of building a business. And I've heard it said quite often, if you're going to do something, make sure that the juice is worth the squeeze. In other words, make sure that the outcome of your time and your energy is worth it. The second thing I would say is surround yourself by people who will encourage you. Um, I say encouragement is easily the greatest natural resource that we have and it's free. And I think that there should be um, far more encouraging and encouragement within our society, within our schools, within our homes. And even before as I was speaking about relationships and the, important, the importance of having healthier relationships, I think encouragement has a lot to do with that. I think a successful marriage or um, two people dating who encourage one another builds um, a cohesiveness, it builds a team, it builds a togetherness. So that's what I would certainly say. Give your all and surround yourself by people who will encourage you. Okay, and earlier during an interview you said you was a minister. Do mm -hmm. you have a church that you minister at? Yes, I'm currently the interim pastor at Peter's Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church in Wallace, North Carolina. 
and my father was the pastor for 15 years and um, I served as an assistant under him for eight years and now I'm serving as the interim pastor and um, should the Lord call um, me to the church and should the people accept then I would be honored to continue serving at Peter's Tabernacle. Um, I also changed my church membership to Peter's Tabernacle so I'm serving there happily and I absolutely love working in the church. Um, if I could do anything that I wanted, I would like to be able to work at the church for free and just to have a separate stream of income and never collect any income from the church. I would like to really be able to work in the church in such a way that <coughs> people would see the church as being a part of the entire I would like to work at the church in such a way that I could really help to connect both parents and teachers with the leaders in the church and really help the church to cause a community to flourish. I think about 50 years ago that's what churches used to do. I think they were seen as the center of the community. And I think as we have seen the church lose its social, political, and economic, and spiritual influence, we've also seen that reflect unfortunately on what has happened in many of our homes. But um, I do have hope in that I see the church still being able to create stronger families and result in both young people, younger married couples. Um, you know, it's interesting, in 1950, 78% of black Americans were married. And that comes from page 53 of Robert M. Franklin's Crisis in the Village. Dr. Franklin is the president of Morehouse College. In 1950, 78% of black Americans were married. And that dropped to 33% in 1980. So the question has to become, um, what internal work must we do? What emotional, spiritual work must we do in order, to, in order to really rebuild our families? And so to that extent, I'm very excited about the opportunity to work again with Moshe and Black Nobility Magazine and having this opportunity to write a monthly article in which I can address many of the issues and the ideas that I would like to put forth that would help create and revitalize our communities because I still have an incredible amount of faith and people's ability to make situations better. I really believe that things become better from the bottom up, not from the top down. And so any way that I can be a part of that process, I would like to. In closing, is there anything else that you would like to share with us, Jerry? I would certainly like to say thank you to Moshe for extending to me this incredible opportunity to address the readers of Black Nobility Magazine, and I'm looking forward to offering words of encouragement and also hearing from readers and hearing about their experiences that also will inspire me as well. I am so thankful for the people who have supported me in my career as an entrepreneur, as a filmmaker, and even as a recent candidate for the U.S. House of Representatives. and so. I am certainly humbled and I have the greatest gratitude to extend to everyone that I look forward to hearing from in the coming months. Thank you. This is Latoya Williams from Black Nobility Magazine. Stay encouraged. Hey, yeah.